Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. We turn our attention to Ferris State Golf and with us, head coach and new head coach, uh, Kyle Wittenbach. And first of all, Kyle, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Ferris State alum, uh, you came back to take over the Bulldog programs this year after a couple years at Northern Michigan. Uh, what's it been like being back here at Ferris State? It's been amazing. It's been great to get my family closer to home and, uh, you know, back to my alma mater and, and we've had some great success so it's been an unbelievable start that's for sure. You mentioned the great success and obviously just a couple weeks into the season but already some uh, championship yeah, trophies here, brought for, some hardware here, with here me. for the Bulldogs <laughs> and a uh, fantastic weekend this past weekend with, with both teams winning their tournaments. Yeah that's something. The Bulldogs uh, hosting their own Bulldog Invitational on the women's side this past weekend and, and always a, a great place to play at Khaki Golf Course. I know a, a great relationship with, uh, with the staff at Khaki. Yeah, and Ian Ziska did a great job. He really helped me a ton setting up the tournament, making sure all the, you know, the little things are done, and, and it really made it an incredible event. And so I'm really proud to say that we can, we can host at Khaki, and then any time any other school comes to uh, comes to play in our event, it's going to be a, a knockout event. You got off to a great start the first day. Shot 321. Uh, had the first day lead. Uh, talk about the performance on, on opening day on Saturday. Yeah, 321, not really what we were shooting for. In our qualifying, that's where we obviously play in practice, and, and we were really looking to do something right around the 310 range. But 321 was good enough to, to get us in a position to win, which is all you can ask for, and, and then they were able to capitalize on the second day. You came back with a 314 uh, on yeah, Sunday and, and Sunday. had to hold off a very good Lewis team that uh, was right behind you in the final standings. Yeah, and that's really good to beat Lewis because Lewis in the last few years has been really competitive in the NCAA regionals and made it to the national championship a few years ago. So that, that was a really good win against them. Talk about individually, uh, Morgan Zloto uh, was, was the winner, uh, the individual medalist uh, tied for first. Uh, talk about her performance on the weekend. Yeah, she's just really steady and she's probably been our most steady player this whole year in terms of scoring. She pretty much shoots um, within three or four shots of the same every single round. Is really steady in the, in the mid to high 70s. and. Um, yeah, she came through for us again. She's just been great for us all year and um, got to go into a really exciting three-way playoff with a girl from Northwood and a girl from uh, from Lewis. And unfortunately, the girl from Lewis, or I'm sorry, the girl from Northwood drained her par putt on that <laughs> first hole to just knock everyone else out, but it was still an incredible event. And great job from Morgan for, for being in that position. You had five in the, the top 15 overall and certainly uh, speaks to the depth uh, maybe as, of your program as well. Uh, just talk about some of the other performances on the women's side. Yeah, so Sydney Murphy just came off an injury, um, was really steady. Um, and then we've got that senior leadership from Liz in the lineup there. And uh, yeah, everyone just played really, really well. Strong competition as well, eight teams in the field. Uh, what did you know about the other teams going in and, and what do you know about them after, after a tournament like that? Well, most of them were a GLIAC team, so um, we kind of knew what to expect coming in. That's why we were shooting. We knew we had to shoot somewhere between the 310 to 315 range, both rounds, to have a good chance. Um, and so that's what we were able to do, and, and that's, that was pretty much our game plan, and we nailed it. We'll shift our attention to the men's side. Uh, they were in action the same two days uh, down mm -hmm. in South Haven at the, at the GLIAC North Invitational, and a, a strong performance. Uh, and they were able to pull out a victory as well on the weekend. Yeah, that's a big victory. So in men's golf and the GLIAC, the way it works is we have uh, two GLIAC tournaments where everyone goes to, and then they have the GLIAC championship, uh, GLIAC championship. So there's really three conference events where there's only GLIAC schools, and so this is one of them. Um, so to be able to win and you know that event, is, it's a lesser win than the conference championship, but it is really just almost a preview in a way. So that was a really big win to know that you know they're capable of, of competing with these teams and and they I mean they blew out the whole field the second day so to, to pick up that 13 stroke win was was really encouraging. 282 on the on the final day after 290 yeah, on good. the on the first day. Uh, what were some of the the differences I guess going from day one to day two? <sighs> Nothing really. Um, I've told them before they went out for that final round that you know the good teams will always post a good final round score. So go out there and and show them all that if you're a good team or not and uh, they responded to that pretty well and we had a bunch of guys under par and and uh, yeah I mean unbelievable performance really I, I got the phone call because I was actually with the women back home and uh, was talking to our assistant coach and he's like yeah but well, they're playing okay you know we're I don't know how they're gonna come in apparently four of the five guys on the team in their in their last four holes, all played at two or three under par, and so they just made a huge run at the end and closed it out. So pretty exciting stuff. Led by Jack Weller, uh, who was able to become the individual medalist uh, yeah, in that tournament. Yeah, to go, Jack. Yeah, he he's been playing well for us all year. He qualified for us in the one spot um, through some rounds in the mid and mid to high 60s up in qualifying, and and he had he had some low rounds last year, 66, I think a couple 68. So um, he's become 
a really steady player, and we're really looking forward to having Jack around for a lot longer. On the men's side, two tournaments, uh, two victories for the Bulldogs. Uh, certainly, you've got to like uh, the, the start they've had to the year. Yeah, I mean, anytime I can bring this much hardware two weeks into the season, whew, that's a good start. Talk about uh, coming back to Ferris State and, and certainly uh, what some of your expectations are uh, here for the Bulldog program. The expectations will just be to always give ourselves a chance to compete to win. Um, I tell the kids as soon as I come in, um, and Mike did a great job recruiting, by the way, all these amazing players that I'm here with now. Um, but the only thing I'm really changing is, is adding my level of intensity or my flavor to the practices or workouts or, or encouragement or motivation or whatever it may be. Um, and they've responded to it really well. So we're always just going to try to put ourselves in a position to win. And whether we win or not, as long as we've learned something from that tournament that we can carry forward with later in the rest of the year, the rest of the tournaments, then we're in good shape. Back in action uh, here in a couple weeks. Uh, a few tournaments left here this fall. Then obviously the bulk of the season with the, with the GLIAC championship and the NCAA tournaments coming up in the spring. Yeah, it's a long season. So um, whether you win them all in the fall or you know don't do as well as you'd like to in the fall, the spring is, is also a really big chunk and a really important part of the season, especially with the, with the conference championship being at the end of it for both programs. Um, so this is all just a really good warm up, really good prep uh, to kind of feel out the teams in the conference, what we're going to have to do, how we're going to prepare, get to know each other on the team, um, get a little chemistry going between myself and the players and then also between the players themselves. So this year is going to be a really exciting year for both programs. We mentioned coming back to Ferris State, uh, you played for the Bulldogs, a uh, great performance uh, during your collegiate career and then on to Northern Michigan for a couple of years. What was that experience like and, and how did that help prepare you to take over the Bulldog program? Well, it was awesome because I got to stay in the conference. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to compete against Ferris for the last two and a half years and, and kind of see what direction they and all the other teams were going in. And it was a little bit different recruiting style up at Northern Michigan than it is here. but. Um, you know, just found a way to, to network with all the coaches and, and really, so now I'm still coaching with the same coaches, which is nice. So the transition's been really um, easier than it, than it could have been, you know, with knowing everyone, knowing a lot of players from the schools and, uh, and just coming here to Ferris has just been, has been awesome. Well, Kyle, uh, first of all, congratulations again on all the success, and uh, we thank you for being here uh, on the show today, and best of luck the rest of the season. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. That's going to do it for another episode of Ferris Sports Update. A reminder, you can follow all the action, get all the updates online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com. Have a great week, everyone.